All right, guys, we'll see how we can connect Angular with uh, Laravel. And uh, here I have two directories, Angular app and Laravel app. I'll go to Laravel and from here, from uh, vendor uh, bin, I'll start uh, sale up, which will start our containers. And this will be for the database as well as running a PHP uh, development server. Uh, so this is our Laravel here. In another tab, I'll start the Angular application, ng-surf. This should uh, compile everything um, correctly and we'll be able to browse our application through the Angular development uh, server. So let's open uh, localhost at uh, 4200 port. And uh, we see our simple application. Of course, we have uh, certain functionalities here to edit users, to change their details, to add new users. And also we are able to go to a different page. So creating uh, new requests and loading up uh, paginated uh, data. Uh, but let's see now how we manage to connect uh, both sides. I will start Visual Studio Code and it will load up uh, both of the projects as you can see here. Uh, the Laravel and the Angular project. A Laravel first, it will serve as a REST API provider. We here have set up inside of the environment that we are logging to the uh, MySQL uh, container. And this is our uh, example database, uh, the username and the password already set up uh, for us uh, through the SAIL implementation. Uh, we have used uh, resource uh, routes, uh, which means that actually uh, we have created a resource for the users uh, and it's managed by the user controller. So if we go to the user controller, when we browse all the users, we are returning a collection based on the model. So we are loading up uh, the model directly and uh, we're using also the paginate uh, method. And in order to provide and customize a little bit the REST API resource, we have created user resource where we are exposing uh, just a few uh, fields to the public. We are exposing only the ID, name and email, which are grabbed from the model. Because if we go in the model, here for models user, uh, we have um, also the password, or remember token, and uh, verified at for the email. So we don't want to expose them to the end users. That's why we have created this uh, user resource where we are specifying just the fields that we would like to be returned as a JSON for our uh, REST API. And also we have created uh, further customization under the user collection where we are not only returning the data, so we are not only returning all the records that we have for all the users, but also we are returning their account because we will need this for the Angular material table uh, later. And we can also go to the requests and uh, we'll see that, uh, for example, for the post request, we have uh, some kind of validation here. So whenever a request comes to the backend, uh, we would like uh, for it to have uh, name, email and password. And if uh, those are not present, the request will be considered as invalid and will not be further processed by the controller. So that's how easy it is to uh, create the Laravel part or the backend part uh, for um, our application. And now we'll go directly to the Angular part. And here, let's take a look at uh, the main uh, components and what they do. We have uh, app component where in the HTML part, uh, we have uh, several components. For example, we have a component which shows all the messages uh, depending uh, whether they exist or not. And the router outlet, which is a placeholder for the current loaded page. We have several services. So if we take a look at the user service, we'll see that, uh, for example, for the get users, in order to display them, we are just returning the response and it's a data part. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, load up uh, this resource. So I've created one request HTTP and uh, together with the REST client extension, I'll send this request and we'll see 200 response. And we see here the data for our users. Uh, they are auto-generated 
by the cedar in Laravel. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, this total count that we are using afterwards in um, Angular material. This is what the API is returning right now. And actually in Angular, uh, we would like just to grab the response and to uh, return to the consuming uh, component of uh, get users, just the data part. Get users is used in uh, list users component. And here in this component, we are loading up the user service. So this uh, file here, and then we are running the get users method. If everything is correct and we have uh, fetched the users, we have a nice response. Uh, we create a side effect via the tab RxJS operator and we use our message service to populate the data directly from the component. In case of error, we are using error handling service uh, to handle a specific error with a custom message that we are sending. Now we can take a look at our uh, message service, for example. It's again a very simple service where we have just one uh, subject and observable from RxJS. Uh, we are using the subject in order to transmit messages through it. So we are using the next method of the subject. So here in the component, we are passing an object to the message subject. And whenever it's uh, loaded up with a new message, uh, we have observable of this uh, message subject on line 14 and whoever is subscribed to this message will receive it and will see it on the screen. So that's how simply we have uh, designed our uh, message service. Okay, and finally, uh, something to mention about uh, whenever we are editing or adding users, actually for uh, performance reasons, we are creating local variables here inside of our component uh, which hold the value of our form control. This way afterwards when we are using uh, this name, this email and this password inside of our template uh, they will be not causing a re-rendering of the form performing way faster than using simply uh, getters or uh, directly uh, using the name of the form group and then the get method inside of the template. So that's a very nice performance uh, improvement. And the next thing is that uh, whenever we are adding user, and in this case we're using uh, validators, we would like to reset those validators. And the proper way of doing this is by going through each of the controls of the form group and uh, resetting them uh, one by one. As you can see here, using object keys, we are going through all the uh, form controls and for each of them, we are clearing the validators and uh, we are basically resetting them afterwards. And this actually ensures better user experience when dealing with forms. Of course, there are a lot more details for this application that I can handle in one uh, simple video. So if you have uh, questions, I'll be glad to answer. Uh, thank you and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.